I want to introduce Dr. Lee Long. So Dr. Long is the Vice President of Clinical Development at Kazar Life Sciences. And I want to make it clear, too, that Kazar Life Sciences is the presenting sponsor of this conference and have actually been quite incredible to work with the past few years in the development of the Portola study, which you're going to learn a lot more about today, as well as uh, what has been really exciting is, as an industry partner, their commitment to understanding the plight of patients, the need for better treatments, and the potential impact of those treatments on quality of life. So we really applaud that, and we're really delighted that they're here and they're helping put on the conference. So join me in welcoming Dr. Lee Long. Thank you, Dr. Lambert. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Lee, uh, Lee Long. I'm from Kizar Life Sciences, and, uh, and it's my great, great pleasure to introduce our clinical trial to you. And um, I hope you enjoy your lunch while listening to my talk. Quick introduction for our company. Um, Kizar was founded in 2015, um, based in South San Francisco in California. Um, the company is very small. We have about 60 uh, employees. However, uh, we have a very passionate and uh, dedicated team focused on pioneering first-in-class uh, therapies for people living with autoimmune diseases, uh, such as autoimmune hepatitis, uh, which has an uh, enormous uh, medical need. Our goal is to develop uh, the new therapies that can improve the lives of people living with hard to treat diseases such as autoimmune hepatitis and the lupus nephritis. Um, I think many people talk about autoimmune hepatitis earlier today, so I just quick go over. It's a rare uh, chronic disease uh, in which the immune system mistakenly attack uh, the cell tissue and organs such as the liver and it can cause this inflammation and the tissue damage, and the severely impacting uh, one's physical health and the quality of life. Uh, there's um, signs of symptoms, uh, you probably very familiar with it, which include enlarged the liver and or spleen, abdominal discomfort, um, pain, fatigue, and a skin rash and itchy skin and with nausea, poor um, appetite, weight loss, um, people who had uh, the bile duct uh, damage will have a jaundice, which is yellow color, stained skin and eye, and also with joint pain. Oops. There's technical challenge for me. So uh, continue, um, the risk factor for people um, with autoimmune hepatitis, if you have other autoimmune conditions, um, you have a higher chance to develop uh, autoimmune diseases. And um, if like patients who have pre-existing uh, thyroid, autoimmune thyroid disease, autoimmune celiac disease, and type one hepatitis may have a higher chance to develop autoimmune hepatitis. And um, as you all know, there's huge medical needs for the treatment of autoimmune diseases. Number one is limited advances uh, in AIH treatment, uh, which means the standard treatment for autoimmune hepatitis advanced very slowly over the past 15 years, 50 years. And uh, number two is the steroid dependency. Um, as you all know, many patients complained about side effect from the steroid use. Up to 40% patients remain on steroid uh, for disease control, uh, regardless of the disease duration. And number three is the limitation of the current standard of care uh, treatment, uh, in inadequate response, uh, toxicities related to the chronic um, immunosuppression, and a lack of a specific targeted therapy. Right? So there is clear need for steroid sparing or steroid free um, uh, treatment for, um, for autoimmune hepatitis. And, um, about this clinical trial, uh, it's called Portola trial. It's named based on um, San Francisco neighborhood. And it's a randomized, uh, double-blinded, 
um, placebo-controlled phase 2A study with open-label extension to evaluate uh, the, um, the safety and efficacy of this molecule called zetomipzomib, or you can call it zeto, and in patients with autoimmune hepatitis. Right? And immunoprism is a new potential target for the treatment of the autoimmune diseases and other autoimmune diseases. Uh, auto, aut, um, autoimmune hepatitis and other autoimmune diseases. And um, you know this um, immune system mistakenly recognized liver tissue and launched the attack to um, the liver, caused the damage and the inflammation of the liver. And immunoprism is an important uh, structure for uh, found in human immune cells that can, um, it's are important in regulating the normal function of the immune system. However, um, when there is an autoimmune disease, such as autoimmune hepatitis, the, um, the immune system mistakenly attacks the healthy tissue and the organ, causing the damage of the organ and the liver. And the research has shown that blocking this immune um, prism uh, with immuno um, um, may rebalance the activity of the overactive immune system, and this may have a beneficial therapeutic uh, effect for autoimmune hepatitis. And zetomipzomib is, is um, selectively bind to the immunoprism, doesn't bind to other tissue and organ, no off-target uh, binding. It blocks immunoprism that could have broad effect on immune cells that drive the autoimmune hepatitis, re rebalancing the overactive immune response without immune suppression. Means even you repeat it, use this molecule for long, uh, we don't see decrease of the immune cells, white blood cells, which is different from uh, the steroid and other immune su uh, suppression that will cause the de decrease of the immune cells population. And similarly, the immune cells, um, people talked earlier today, which include macrophage, T cells, B cells for different uh, uh, area that attack your uh, normal, uh, normal tissue. And um, zetomipzomib is a first-in-class uh, inhibitor for immunoprism, um, which is different from a current autoimmune hepatitis. Uh, it's observed to be safe and uh, tolerable in preclinical and uh, clinical studies. We, uh, we have um, run clinical trial for healthy volunteers, which is about 100 healthy volunteers, which we have uh, 80 patients with uh, systemic lupus, lupus nephritis, and 25 patients with myositis. And during this trial, we see um, the, this molecule is very well tolerated uh, in this, um, in this um, patient or healthy volunteers. There's, um, it's not a steroid. It doesn't behave like steroid. Will not have uh, the side effects similar to steroid, and it's not observed to be immunosuppressive up to date. As I mentioned earlier, it doesn't cause a decrease of your immune cells population. It's not um, predicted to result in clinically significant drug drug interaction. What does that mean? Is if you're using other medications, uh, you don't worry about. They use this participate trial will interfere with other medication. There is no contraindication. You're free to use other medication continuously. If you're using medication for autoimmune hepatitis, um, using medication for hypotension, hypertension, and medication for uh, diabetes, for example, you can continue to use those medications. It's different from a current treatment uh, because it has potential uh, to rebalance the overactive immune response without direct suppressing the immune system. Right. Portola study, uh, which is the name of this trial, uh, is now enrolling adult patients for the treatment of autoimmune hepatitis. 
um, um, researchers to are evaluating the investigational drug, zetomibzomib, or you can call it zeto, to see if it's a safe and effective in treating autoimmune hepatitis. And if you're 18 years or older and with a clinical diagnosis of autoimmune hepatitis with the signs of active disease despite of the current medication regimen for equal or longer than three months, and or you have the remission of the autoimmune hepatitis, but disease come back. We call the disease flare. And patients who have a found that the current treatment uh, with steroids and other uh, immune suppressants will do not work well. Um, the liver inflammation still continue, the liver enzymes still elevated, or uh, cannot be continued due to the um, uh, tolerability side effect. And patients who participate in the trial must follow the protocol and uh, agree to use uh, the glucocorticoid therapy, which is a steroid, and follow the tapering schedule and uh, return to all protocol-specific uh, study visit and complete all the study uh, required um, procedures. Right. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, the study is divided into two periods. Number one is called the double-blind period. That means sponsor, your doctor, and the patient self don't, don't know uh, which drug you're taking. It can, you can take uh, the investigational drug, or you may also be assigned into the placebo group. And uh, what received the, the either zeto or placebo through a weekly injection under the skin, it's called the subcut subcutaneous injection. So basically, it injects the drug under the skin for 24 weeks uh, in addition to the standard of care. Right? So no matter which group you're in, um, placebo or, uh, or zeto group, um, patient will have to take this standard of care, which include um, steroid followed by uh, the tapering schedule. If patients are taking other immune suppressants um, prior to the participation of the trial, um, most of these uh, immunosuppressant drug are permitted to continue to use this drug during the study, right? And placebo look like the same as investigational, investigational drug, but it contain no active uh, ingredient. There is a two in three uh, chance patient will be assigned into the zeto mip uh, group. One in three chance patient will be assigned into the placebo group. Uh, Again, I want to emphasize, no matter which group you're in, in addition to this investigational drug, patient will also take in the standard care. So you still take the um, steroid and other immune suppressant for the treatment of the autoimmune hepatitis. And the clinical trial doctor, staff, your patient itself will not know the treatment group you're in and just mainly just for avoid any bias um, during this uh, analysis. After completion of double-blind treatment period, patient will be evaluated to enter the open-label extension part. All patients, no matter you're taking um, placebo or the, the zeto drug, all these patients will receive zetomibzomib during this open label extension part for once a week dosing for another 24 weeks. And easing participants' burden is a priority of a Portola trial, right? And we aim to make every participant's Portola uh, clinical trial experience as easy as possible. And, um, Accommodations for uh, clinical trial participants vary by trial location and it may include the following. Number one, it's a study assessment and a procedure are provided to the participant at no, at no cost. And participants receive our stipends for each a completed study visit. And a tribal concierge service may uh, will also be available. And the very last but not least, it's remote home trial service may be available. What does that mean is 
patient and those child need to come to the site once every other week for dosing and also for blood draw uh, for the lab analysis. In between, uh, there's only one in, in, injection required. You don't need to draw the blood. In that situation, um, we have a so-called home health care pro service provider. We have uh, the carrier come to the uh, hospital to uh, take the medication and deliver it to the patient at uh, home. There will be registered nurse at home to do the injection for the patient. It depends on the hospital's policy. Majority of the hospitals we are doing the trial are, are uh, permit this type of a service. There's a few uh, hospital because their policy, this service is not available. So it's not available in all sites, but it will be available in most of the sites. So in summary, there has been limited advance for, for AH treatment. Uh, there is significant medical needs for effective AH treatment that reduce the use of the chronic immunosuppression. And the immuno, immunoprism is a promising potential new target for uh, AH. And zetomipsomib selectively inhibits the immunoprism and is investigational drug that is being studied in Portola trial as a potential new treatment for autoimmune hepatitis. And if you want to learn more about this trial, you can either go to our company's website or you can also go to the, uh, the government uh, website um, in clinicaltrial.gov because the study registered uh, over there. And I'm happy to answer any question from audience. Thank you. So thank you, Dr. Long. Maybe we have time for just one question. I, I know the keys are life sciences folks are at the outside. Yeah, I will be around come. today and tomorrow, and we also have a booth outside. Um, welcome to, uh, to, to stop by. Just one perspective for me. Uh, you know, we've, we've interacted with the FDA, and also we've done a physician researcher symposium this past year, and one thing was really important to patients was the lack of no injectable or biologic therapies as relative to things such as inflammatory bowel disease. So patients were tired of doing daily oral therapy. So I will say that Kazar has a compound that's injectable, and again, it's weekly, but at least this is a step in the right direction in terms of what our patients are communicating to us. Just wanted to confirm that participants in the trial will be able to continue um, medicines like Celsept and Prograf, as well as prednisone, that they would be able to continue those while in the trial? Yeah, prednisone or budesonide is a standard care in the trial. So patients, all patients, no matter your, each, which group you're in, you're taking prednisone. If patients are taking other immunosuppressants like azathioprine, uh, mycophenol, mofotel, and uh, tacrolimus, cyclosporine, um, patient can continue to use that one. The, the, one requirement for that is the dose for those immunosuppression has to be stable for at least four week, weeks prior to the enrollment. All right. Yeah. Thank you.